Hello everyone. Welcome to our discussion on uh, class 8. In the last sessions, we discussed about the salient features and the classification of class 8. And in this session, we are going to discuss about the flight adaptations. Uh, what are the adaptations that are present in the birds that uh, make them or uh, give them the ability to fly? So in this particular session, we are going to uh, see uh, the different types of adaptations, both morphological as well as anatomical adaptations that enable birds to fly. So flight adaptations in birds, we are going to discuss that under two headings, the morphological volant adaptations and anatomical volant adaptations. So here volant means something which is related to flight. So uh, we will be discussing in two heads, morphological as well as anatomical. In this particular uh, session, we will discuss the morphological adaptations and anatomical adaptations will be discussed in the next session. So moving on to the morphological or volant adaptations. The morphological or volant adaptations are uh, mainly of uh, uh, these four types. Uh, the shape of the body, the wings and feathers, mobile neck and beak, and their bipedal locomotion. So these are the morphological adaptations that have enabled birds the ability to fly. So the first, the morphological adaptations of uh, the birds include the shape of the body. So uh, as discussed in the salient feature, uh, the shape of their body uh, is boat-like or spindle-shaped. They are having a spindle-shaped body and and uh, it lacks any extra projections and this uh, two uh, features they are the spindle shape a boat like structure and the lack of any external extra projections uh, these two they uh, they aid in flight and the lack of extra projections uh, how they benefit is that uh, this helps in uh, reducing the friction uh, during flight the long mobile neck maintains the center of gravity uh, which is also uh, important in flight and the tail is used as a rudder during flight. So rudder means nothing but what you see in this particular diagram. So this is a rudder of an, um, an aeroplane and the same rudder is also seen in the case of uh, uh, ships. Uh, so this is nothing but uh, these rudders uh, helps to change the, uh, uh, change the uh, path of their flight. Uh, both for uh, birds, the aeroplanes and as well as ships. Uh, to change their path, they use this particular uh, thing which is called as the rudder, uh, which will change the direction of uh, the, the wind and uh, in the case of water, the force of water will be changed and this uh, will help in changing their path. So tail is used as uh, such as a rudder for birds. And coming to the second one, wings and feathers. So coming to the wings, so this diagram depicts the different types of uh, feathers that uh, the birds usually have. Uh, in the uh, uh, tail as well as in the wings, having special feathers, usually referred to as quill feathers. Quill means this particular, the, uh, the uh, feathers which are having this particular uh, vein like structure. Uh, usually they are, uh, such uh, feathers are called as a quill feathers. And uh, the quill feathers are seen on uh, the tails uh, and as well as in the wings. Uh, the uh, the feathers which are the quill feathers which are seen in the uh, wings are called as uh, they are uh, both these helps in uh, both these aids in flight and the ones which are seen in the uh, wings are called as the remiges and the ones which are seen in the tail uh, this one they are called as retresses so these are the different terms which are given and they, these are the feathers which helps them uh, in flight and you can see the other one the contour feathers these are the feathers uh, which are uh, which are backwardly directed feathers uh, which are seen all over the body and this uh, feathers they, it gives uh, the body the streamlined nature the smooth streamlined nature of the body is due to this contour feathers another one is the semi plume these are seen um, just uh, just at uh, just below the uh, contour feathers uh, you can see that the uh, the semi plume uh, feathers are not uh, they do not have a uh, interlocking mechanism both in the uh, quill feathers and the contour feathers there is an interlocking mechanism between the uh, between these ratchets or these uh, the uh, these particular portions so each uh, hair such uh, structure in this uh, they are having an interlocking mechanism whereby uh, the, there is no such a fluffy nature and this uh, structure is important in uh, flight 
so this is this interlocking mechanism um, is present in both uh, the quill feathers and also the contour feathers so these uh, the semi plume as well as the down feathers you can see that the difference between the down feathers and the semi plume is that uh, the down feathers are seen uh, very close to the body um, and uh, the semi plume they are having this uh, central axis that is lacking in down feathers and both this down feathers as, as well as the semi plume they lack the interlocking mechanism and the function of both these uh, mainly for um, the mainly they are uh, their function is to uh, as they are seen very close to the body uh, to preserve heat uh, loss or to preserve the heat as the main function of uh, the semi plume as well as the down feathers coming to the other two uh, st fine structures they are the uh, philoplume as well as the bristles uh, so in this you can see that uh, they are having only this uh, central axis and also uh, bristle like uh, uh, bristle like structures or branches are seen and mostly they are seen the bristle or the uh, bristle like structures they are seen in the uh, head region etc so uh, this is an outline of what are the different types of feathers that are seen in birds so the important ones for flight are the uh, quill feathers which are the uh, the retresses which are seen in the tail and the remiges which are seen in the wings so the contour feathers uh, this one uh, makes the body streamlined and uh, reduces friction and how it makes uh, it streamlined is that because of they are having the interlocking mechanism as a result it is not fluffy like the down feathers and the uh, semi plume feathers and uh, and thus it reduces friction so that it will be very smooth and also the oil from the pin glands also helps in this interlocking mechanism uh, coming to the uh, uh, the other uh, structures the feathery covering makes the body uh, light and protects from the environmental hazards and heat loss uh, we discussed how uh, the heat loss is prevented and that is by uh, the special type of fluffy feathers which are called as the semi plume as well as the down feathers they preserve heat in the body the large quill feathers and the wings in the wings or the, on the wings which are called as remiges and the tail which are the retrexes which are used for flight the tail uh, with a, a spreading fan or uh, like a fan like mechanism act as an effective steering organ that is uh, what we discussed which is the uh, rudder like uh, the rudder like action of the uh, tail uh, so the tail uh, like uh, what we saw in that aeroplane it uh, just uh, shifts its position as a result the air pressure uh, in the uh, uh, air pressure uh, will be uh, the direction of the air pressure will be shifted and that will uh, result in uh, changing the direction uh, the wings consist of coming to the wings it consists of the framework of bones muscles uh, blood vessels and feathers and uh, if you observe the wings they are having a thick and strong leading edge leading edge means in the front portion uh, the front portion they are they are, they are very thick because of the presence of the bone and etc they will be thick and the posterior side uh, uh, or uh, towards uh, uh, towards the uh, posterior side you are having the quill feathers the backwardly directed quill feathers are present uh, the posterior or the convex upper part, uh, upper part and the concave lower part, uh, lower surface causes reduction in the air pressure above and increases below. So you can see uh, here in this particular um, animated uh, picture, you can see that uh, the upper surface is concave and uh, you can see here this is convex, this side will be convex. When it uh, is flying, you can see this is convex and the upper side is concave. And because of the convex uh, lower surface, the air pressure will be high in the lower surface and air pressure will be low in the upper surface. And this is the driving force for the uh, bird to move forward and upward during flight. Because of the high pressure which is uh, present underneath the wings, when the bird strikes the wings because of the high pressure, it moves up. And that is how uh, the wings act. So this is the first one uh, or the uh, sec uh, second one which we discussed which is the wings and the feathers which are the which is the second morphological uh, volant adaptation. Moving on to the third one the mobile neck and the beak. So mobile neck uh, which is a long and flexible neck which provides or helps in procuring the food. Uh, the mouth is drawn into a horny beak which acts as forceps for, uh, for picking up the grains and also nest building etc. Uh, so this is also an adaptation for uh, flight. Uh, next is because they do not have or they do not have uh, they do not use their forelimbs for uh, procuring food etc. Their uh, neck is um, much adapted for that purpose. 
Uh, the fourth one and the last one in the morphological adaptation is the bipedal locomotion. For locomotion on land and to support the entire body weight, uh, the hind limb uh, is positioned uh, somewhat in the uh, anterior. Uh, uh, usually the hind limbs are seen towards the posterior uh, end of the body in other animals in, uh, in chordates. But you can see in this particular case, uh, the uh, hind limb is moved towards uh, is, uh, towards the center of the body or more anterior than the usual position and the muscles of the hind limbs are also well specialized for an arboreal life uh, the muscles of the hind limb uh, speciality is that when a, a bird sits on the branch it the toes close around the twig automatically so it will grip the uh, uh, branch which is sitting uh, with uh, which it sits uh, it will uh, clutch on the brand. That is an automatic response. Whenever the brand, uh, bird lands or uh, is sitting on a branch, it just uh, holds the twig, uh, uh, twig around, and that is an automatic process because of the specialized muscles. And because of this particular uh, 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 automatic system, which is present in the toes, a bird can sleep in this position on the branch without falling off. So these are the four uh, morphological adaptations uh, that helps the bird to fly. And coming to the next one, which is a volant adaptation, we have many volant adaptations, sorry, anatomical volant adaptations to be discussed and that will be discussed in the uh, next session. Thanks for hearing.